Hey there, buddy, it's Russ, and today I'm going to do an unboxing video of the Bear Claw Thunderhawk. Uh, this is actually my second attempt at this. We tried a live stream, but the computer completely just crapped the bed. Uh, I don't think the Wi Fi connection is good enough here to do a full on stream. So uh, you did miss the initial parts of me pulling the bike out of the box, which is fine because that's not very exciting. And we have the bike up here on the stand. Here it is in all its glory. Um, it is a titanium uh, mainframe and a tie fork, which is pretty cool about this bike because a lot of, or most of the uh, tie gravel bikes you see out there by Moots, by Linsky, uh, you name it, they tend to ship with a carbon fork. So I've been, I was super curious to see what this is like with the tie fork and had them uh, ship the bike with that. Again, I don't get paid to do these reviews or these unboxings. It's out of my own pure curiosity and to share the information with you guys. Uh, these bikes go back. Um, no money changes hands unless I decide to buy the bike. It's got a tie fork, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it's got that chunky, segmented, almost brutalist design. Uh, in terms of mounts, it's got a three-pack mount. Uh, so you can you know, put the anything cage or, or what have you on here. And also, uh, I think you could probably jury rig a rando rack of some sort. There is a hole at um, right below the fork crown, so it will support that. Might be a little tough to run uh, low riders, um, but yeah. I mean, you gotta love this brush kind of look of Thai. Uh, just looks really classy and industrial all at the same time. So interesting thing to note about this build is that it's got the SRAM uh, access mullet system. So wireless, first uh, wireless drivetrain that uh, I'll get a chance to try out. And I think what will be cool is to compare uh, this wireless system against the budget mullet, uh, which you guys know I've been doing uh, in the Cave of Bad Ideas. So, should be cool to see. Test them back to back. Okay, so in the back here, it looks like we've got uh, some mounts. So you can definitely put uh, a rear rack on this bike, make it very useful. So I believe this is going to have the uh, the 10, 10 to 50 cassette. So lots of, lots of range here. Should get me up those hills. <laughs> Here's a bike, it's looking pretty sweet. I'm just gonna pop in the saddle here. Got a, a whiskey uh, carbon seat post, I believe. No, it's alloy. Take that back. It still feels pretty light. Just put it in here, rough it in for show. Okay, so we've got what looks like a bicycle here. So I have to slide this whole doohickey back so there's some clearance to actually turn the cranks. So do you have to turn these on? <laughs> Aha, there's no battery in the back. So I'm going to assume that it might be in here. So I've never used uh, electronic shifting system, but I am aware that they need batteries. <laughs> so this will be good uh, from the perspective of the noob to see how easy and intuitive it is. So here's a little charging pod. Um, USB charging cable, and this is said battery. I'm hoping that there is somewhat of a charge like this. All right, clicks right in. That wasn't too hard. So what's interesting is that uh, it's got two shifters or two shifting pot, uh, paddles left and right. The one on the left controls it going into the easier gears. It doesn't overshift, and the one on the right drops it down into the harder gears. It makes this like super cute, like chipmunk-like sound when you when you make shifts. Interesting. It's like Wait. I know. Let's uh, get rid of this cable over, or this. Zip tie over here so we can see the front. As you can see, uh, tapered head tube, uh, the segmented tie fork, nice and beefy. 
There is a plethora of mounts. Again, kind of three pack mount spacing here and down here so you can move the cage up or use anything cages. A uh, regular bottle, standard bottle cage mount on the bottom and uh, rear and mounting points for a rear rack. So definitely fully outfitted for all sorts of uh, different packing configurations. Take a look at the shifting one more time. So interesting, like my first impressions of, of ever using electronic shifting is uh, you definitely don't have to exert as much force or throw to actuate the shift. Um, it seems to work, it seems to, to feel very similar to cable shifting to me right now. Um, it does make a little zipping sound, which uh, the cables don't make. I think that's the servo motor moving uh, the derailleur up and down the, the cassette. I know what I'll do. I will put the front wheel in and take some quick shots outdoors just so you guys can get an overall uh, view of the bike. So let's go outside. All right, so we are here outside and I've got the bike lifted up for you guys. Ta-da! It looks pretty sweet. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do next is just do a quick weigh-in. Okay, so let's settle. So it's basically 20 pounds. <laughs> Try to show you guys. Right? Yeah, about 20 and a half pounds, no pedals, no bottle cages. Uh, all tie. I think the, the tie fork does add a little bit of weight, so you could cut the weight down more if you want full carbon. But I'm so curious about how this tie fork rides. So as you can see, it's a pretty uh, sweet looking bike. I love the look of the tie fork. Should be interesting trying the electronic shifting. Again, my first time trying an electronic drivetrain. And we'll see how it compares to the budget mullet, right? Uh, so far, bike looks dope. Can't wait to uh, put some miles on it. And sorry if you guys tried to watch the, the, the live stream, the computer system just shat the bed, basically. So if you want to find out how this bike actually rides, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep the supple side down.